Dr. Harlan Krumholtz, one of the world's most prominent quality of care researchers, has been leading the charge to abandon the strategy of treating patients to LDL cholesterol targets. He points out the clinical trials that have formed the basis of the adult treatment panel guidelines did not measure treating to LDL targets. They measured doses of statins. So the focus of therapy should be on reducing risk rather than on achieving a specific LDL cholesterol level. Now this comes to many of my colleagues as a, a bit of a surprise and a difficult concept to think about because for so long we've been talking about treating to target. People have been giving lectures on this. It's been incorporated into our being that if someone comes in with an elevated cholesterol, we, we need to jump on that and to treat aggressively. And in fact, this whole idea of treating to target is a very easy uh, rule of thumb to remember. And trying to get people less than 100 or less than 70, we can feel that we've reached our goal and, and feel very good about our treatment strategy. But the question is, is it serving the patient's best interest? This idea of treating to risk is a new idea, but it's one that should make a lot of sense to people in the sense that what we're doing is trying to find the people who are most likely to benefit from the drugs. To shed some light on whether this approach might work on a larger scale, Dr. Krumholtz and his colleagues ran a simulation model using 15 years of data from statin trials. What we did was we went to a bunch of experts, lipid experts, and we said, can you agree with our assumptions about the benefits of statins and, you know, uh, in benefit of higher potency or higher dose statins and the risk of populations. And we got the, a bunch of experts uh, to agree with our assumptions. And then we ran some models and said, would you be better off treating people to target with all these assumptions that everybody agreed about, or would you be better off treating them based on their risk? And uh, what we found was that there was no question. We saved more lives and treated fewer people if we focused on treating patients' risk rather than singularly focusing on whether what their number was for their LDL cholesterol and trying to get it below a certain mark. While physicians may embrace this shift in theory, the ever-increasing emphasis on performance measures may make them shy away from making the change in practice. Dr. Krumholtz, an expert on cardiovascular performance measures, is not worried. Some docs may be worried that performance measures will penalize them for practicing in this way. What people need to realize is guidelines are already beginning to shift. Guidelines from the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association, both around secondary prevention uh, and uh, emerging guidelines that are soon to come out, are beginning to emphasize the use of statins over LDL and the focusing on high-risk patients in a contradistinction to just targets, and also putting these medications that have less evidence far at the back of the line and not pushing them in any way, but saying that these are optional strategies, but not suggesting that it's all about target and use whatever medications you can to get people to certain targets. I fully expect the performance measures to follow suit. It will be up to, to medicine writ large to support the practicing doctors by ensuring that no one is penalized for this. It's also important to recognize that the VA, the country's largest integrated healthcare system, has already made this change. They have already changed their performance measures, so they're no longer evaluating whether people are tested, uh, uh, treated to target, but are looking rather at whether or not patients are being treated appropriately with statins. This is a big change. I think it heralds a change that you will see throughout the healthcare system, but it's true that practicing docs need this kind of support. It would be so unfortunate for people to be adopting new information and better practices and in any way to be penalized for that. And it's going to be very important that organized medicine, that those who are developing these measures and using them, catch up to this new evidence uh, and the changing guidelines. This is Elizabeth Mishkati reporting for IMNG Medical Media.